here's a slide that shows some of the goals that were considered as we looked at PCI Express 5.0. And one of the things that's always been important for every revision of PCI Express so far has been to maintain backward compatibility. I think that's a big part of the equity of um, the PCI Express technology. Now, one thing also about PCI Express 5.0 is the timeline or the time frame that we wanted to have it completed. So one way to think of PCI Express 5.0 um, technology is this, that think of everything that is in PCI Express 4.0 and then Gen 5 really is Gen 4 with only the features necessary to get us to a speed bump of uh, 32 gigabits per second. I mean, that's probably a pretty big simplification of it, but really the focus was getting the speed up and finishing that specification a lot faster. You know, I've talked about the seven year time lag between um, PCI Express 3.0 and 4.0, and we certainly didn't want to see that happen with PCI Express 5.0. So backward compatibility is key. Um, we agreed and worked towards getting the signaling rate doubled um, versus Gen 4 to 32 gigabits per second, and really minimal spec changes. So only those things that really needed were needed to enable that speed bump. So the exit from electrical idle ordered set had to be adjusted for the higher frequency. We had to define a data bit or a data bit to indicate the new speed of 32 gigabit. And then we've got um, some things that are the same, which is the encoding. So we're still using the same type of encoding that we started with PCI Express 3.0, which is the 128, 130-bit encoding. Um, now, a big difference between PCI Express 4 and 5 is the loss budget for the channel. So we're targeting between 35 and 36 to even 38 dB of loss. Um, for standard um, FR4 mid-loss type material or better uh, for PCI Express 5.0. And that loss budget defines an eye height and eye width that's really pretty small. Now, of course, other things that we had to add are some uh, dealing with tag bits and the like on um, the protocol side to enable proper buffering and things like that. But um, So those are some of the goals that went into defining the Gen 5 specification. Continuing with the goals, um, some things um, that didn't change are the target bit error rate. So we're still operating with a bit error ratio of 10 to the minus 12. Um, the transmitter presets are also the same. So we define these, um, the, the transmitter de-emphasis ratios uh, in PCI Express 3.0 and we follow this through the same with the same definitions um, for um, the presets P0 through P10 uh, for PCI Express 5.0. Still maintaining backward compatible with previous generations, so a Gen 5 device will work in a Gen 1 system, and likewise a Gen 1 device will need to operate and run in a CAM compatible Gen 5 system. So that that's you know a key component of what we're trying to do for PCI Express 5.0. Now, to be able to um, meet the timeline, one of the big assumptions that went into the development of the specification had to do with how we're going to do the validation of the devices. So we made a bet that the transmitter and receiver qualification um, process or methods, test methods, would be leverageable substantially from PCI Express 4.0 work. Now, that there was a pretty big change between how we did uh, transmitter and receiver validation for Gen 3 when we went to Gen 4, especially on the receiver side. Um, and to be able to do Gen 5 within the time frame that was specified, we basically thought that we would want to do it the same way. I mean, there's always going to be some small differences, but the idea of using an external ISI channel, for example, was really key to not having to develop a new test method because that takes a lot of time when you have to get a lot of different vendors and um, come up with a lot of data to demonstrate that you're able to achieve the, the goals and, and, and you have the best shot at um, proving interoperability. Um, 
anyway, so so that was a big win for us, I think, for Gen 5, and that we thought we are pretty confident that we're able to leverage those test test methods substantially, and we've got a, a lot of good pathfinding work that points to that um, assumption proving out pretty well. Now, um, also the same transmitter and voltage and jitter parameters as Gen 4, so that makes testing of the uh, the test methods used for testing the transmitters um, very similar to what we did with PCI Express 4.0 with just different limits.